This is the On The Mark Podcast, bringing you facts, opinions, and personal experiences from the outdoor industry. I got the opportunity to shoot an AR-15. That was one of the funnest experiences that I've had. It's, it's pretty exciting. It's a, it's a big rush. Presented by Sightmark, an industry leader in optics, bore sights, night vision, and more. Make your mark. Let me get my, let me get my juice ready. All right. Welcome to the On The Mark Podcast. I'm your host, Jeff Hamilton. Today, we're in the Sidemark studio, officially. With the cameras rolling, we're running video for the first time. So it's either going to be really exciting or really bad. We'll figure it out later. Um, It might not be video. If the video turns out terrible, I'm just going to cut the video and we'll play just the audio. So if you're just listening to this and there's no video, you know that I was too ugly to be on camera. Today, I have joining us all the way from Arizona, Al... Lost him. Don't know why the call dropped. Let me call him back. No, you can keep rolling. Probably just leave this in, to be honest. I normally don't, like technical issues and stuff like that just leave it in people like it i think or maybe they hate it i don't know we'll see is it your phone or mine that just died well i don't know i'm calling you from a computer so it might have been me okay but i got you back and you sound better than before so i'll take it cool um i'm gonna redo this intro real quick welcome to the on the mark podcast i'm your host jeff hamilton today we're in the Sightmark studio, officially, with the cameras rolling, which means we're bringing in video. If you're listening to this on any of the audio streaming apps, just know that the video option is available. I've got YouTube up and running now. Um, my guest, however, along with a lot of my guests, are out of state. Um, today, I've got Al Corey calling in from Arizona. Al, am I saying your last name right? Corey. Al Corey. Corey. Okay, perfect. I was just making sure... Um, he's the owner of American Guns and Ammo out of Arizona. And Al, tell us a little bit about you and how you got started. Well, I uh, used to be in the funeral industry for about 18 years. And I was a big gun enthusiast. And got tired of walking in the same gun shops, having the same 12 to 15 rifles and pistols and Thought I would open up my own gun shop, and that's how it all started. Well, so you glassed over the beginning, which was 18 years in the funeral industry. How'd you, uh, I mean, what made you get into the funeral industry? How'd that go? It was a family business, so I started uh, from the bottom and was there for a long time, and then got tired of it after about 18 years and wanted to try something different. I got you, I got you. So you dove into the best industry there possibly could be in the firearms industry tell me a little bit about american guns and ammo um did you did you start it or did you come into it um you know as an existing company and and work your way up how'd that work one of my uh, best friends started it about 17 years prior to me getting into it but treated it more like a hobby instead of a retail store and had a good sized plaza Gotcha. So I talked him into renting me a self-standing building in his plaza, and he ended up giving me his business name, phone number, contacts, and all of his guns <laughs> on consignment to help me get started. It's a pretty cool deal. Oh, very nice. And so, yeah, he just basically said, hey, if you're if you're super invested in this, let's, let's just give the whole thing over. Yep. So American Guns and Ammo, one of the things that I noticed, um, and anytime I have a guest on, I try to – just hop online and um, do some quick research, anything I can. Of course, you know, I talk directly with your rep here at um, Sightmark um, and get a little bit of background on you guys. But for you specifically, I also hopped online and just, um, you know, did a quick Google of your store. Um, One of the things that kind of stood out to me were the tremendous amount of reviews you've got on Google. Is there something you do to get people to – um, 
you know, hop online and give those reviews to you. Not only are they not only are they just like regular reviews because generally it's harder to get people to give good reviews because if they're happy, they're not going to talk about it. Uh, especially invest the time to go in and, and write a review. Normally when they're mad about something is when they get online to go and write a review. So when I get on Google and I, I Google American Guns and Ammo and I see 4.9 average rating on Google with thousands and thousands of reviews, I mean, how do you pull something like that off? Well, it's not quite thousands of reviews. We're getting close. I think we're uh, just under 900 reviews. Um, part of back when I told you I was in the funeral industry and got out, I uh, loved walking into gun shops, but got tired of the same old style gun shop, same rifles and pistols, lack of communication, lack of customer service. Right. So I figured that I would do that and change it up a little bit. And the reviews, just like you said, when people are happy, they move on with their life. Yeah. When people are upset, it seems like they have all the time in the world yep. to get in front of a keyboard and <laughs> bad mouth you. Yeah, absolutely. But one of my favorite lines that I tell people is I don't price match until someone customer service matches me. And I think customer service is still key in any retail industry. And, and I think that's why I have so many reviews. So basically, I will ask them for an honest review or sometimes they just go out of their way and do it. So I've been very fortunate with the customer base that I have. Well, I got to say that um, if they're just doing it out of the kindness of their heart and they're not being prompted in some way, then that does speak volumes. Because nowadays people like people like scratch for reviews super hard and just there's offers out there like, hey, you know, you could win this if you give us a review or, you know, get a certain percentage off of this if you give us a review. You see that all the time. So if these reviews are coming organically, then that's majorly impressive. One of the things that you just mentioned, though, was um, just going into the same type of gun shop over and over again, the same 10 or 15 guns on the wall with the same crappy customer service. Um, you know, we've needed somebody to get into this industry that can kind of break that mold because in the last two years, we have had an enormous amount of people flock to the firearms industry. And I think it's really, really important that these people come into a good environment where they're not looked down upon because they might not know everything there is to know right off the bat. Um, and that they're actually given like quality service and actually talk to like humans and not necessarily, you know, belittled or, or frowned upon. Um, so it's really, really good to hear that you guys have kind of taken that stance and and done that over there in uh, Arizona. What were your experiences like uh, early on owning the shop? I mean, did you come into that good of an environment when, you're, when your friend had it, or was it something you kind of had to build up, or was it something that was already kind of building and you just had to nourish that relationship a little bit with the community? Well... He had more of a kind of a hidden diamond in the rough type shop, and he had a certain amount of clientele that he knew or were friends of his. And, of course, he had some other people that he didn't know, but it was more of a hobby for him than, you know, an everyday open and close type retail shop. So yeah. I got some of his base, but a majority of the base came later. And the biggest thing that I can think of that, is as simple as greeting people at the door, I think, is what made the difference. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, that makes a huge difference. And then just telling people bye when they leave. Like, it, it's funny because this is a completely different industry, and this is showing my fatness. You guys on camera, you guys that are watching the video already can see. But the CC's Pizza in Cleburne, Texas, my son likes to eat pizza, my wife enjoys pizza, and I freaking love pizza. So we go eat CC's all the time. Um, pizza's not great, but it's buffet. The manager there, and no other CCs has done this for us, and I've eaten at a few. Uh, the manager there, every time we walk in, doesn't matter where he's at in the store. If he's in the back of the kitchen just getting onto the busboy, he will sprint up to the front just to say hi as we walk in through the door. And when we leave, he says goodbye, thank you, no matter what, every single time. And my wife says the same thing to me when we leave. 
this is the best place. She's like, we're, we'll come here all the time. And we do. We go there all the time. The pizza is not even great, but the quality of service is amazing. And people tend to forget that that same type of thing carries throughout industries. It's not a pizza thing. It's not a restaurant thing. It's a general courtesy to your customer. Well, I think people want to be acknowledged as a human being and not a number. Right. Um, I went into Cabela's about four years ago. I'll never go back again. But literally people would walk up and they have that little number tab and you pull the tab and they'll call your number and you walk up and if you're not ready to tell them what you're willing to buy, they will literally push you to the side yep. and tell you to go get another number and then they'll call someone else where it's basically an order taking. And yep. I, I just didn't think that was a way to do business, especially in today's world where more and more men are getting involved that are new shooters mm -hmm. and a lot more women a ton of and ton of women coming into. They the don't industry. like walking into a place where they feel like they're being belittled. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely, I agree, hundred percent. And you know what's funny is you talked about how the store before uh, American Guns and Ammo, before you took over, was kind of like, you know, he had his core um, group of customers, which were a lot of buddies, and you know, it was kind of more of a personal type shop. Um, there is a shop here in Texas, uh, relatively close to where we are here at Selmark, um, and their reviews are totally different than yours. And they have got a big issue, but I don't think they give a damn. Uh, <laughs> what it is is it, this old man runs his gun and ammo shop, um, but he is absolutely absolutely refusing service to anybody he doesn't personally know so he I, I mean and he's got his doors open with the open sign on and it's like if you go in there as somebody who doesn't know this guy and you ask him hey uh do you have any 223 ammo in stock yeah i do oh great how much is it well it's not for sale well what do you mean i thought you just said you had some well i've got some but it's only for my regulars and I'm not kidding, every Google review is like this, whether you're purchasing ammo or firearms or anything like that. And I'm not going to say the guy's shop name because I don't want to drag anybody through the mud, you know, that personally. But I don't mind mentioning it in this case because um, it sounds like at least the buddy of yours that owned the shop before didn't run it that way. Because I can tell you that that does not <laughs> result in 4.9 Google rating. Um, I'm just blown away. I can't imagine. I can't imagine paying for a space to have a shop to not sell guns and ammo. Like I don't know why you would even want to do that. But uh, more power to that guy. Um, but it, it, it that case is kind of an extreme. But I see that similar thing happen. Not necessarily a complete shutout of customers, but I see that similar thing happen. Um, pretty regularly within the industry and it's not just with dealers it's also just with individuals who have purchased firearms or whatever whatever gun they bought is the best one on the market and whatever optic they bought is the best one on the market no matter what um, you could present something that they've never shot before or ever used and it won't matter because what I've got is the best on the market and you should have done this why'd you get that piece of trash and it's like as a new person that comes into the firearms industry um, it seems like a lot of times they're met with this abrasive personality right out of the gate. And to me, like, we've got to figure out a way as a, as a community, especially with the number of new people that have came in, we got to figure out a way as a community to, to kind of start, you know, working with each other and talking with each other. And it's okay to not like their optic or their firearm or the type of ammunition that they're firing. But not trash them. I mean, that's what they that's what they went with. And at the end of the day, it's all about educating somebody and allowing people to educate themselves, too, because sometimes you have to make a bad purchase to realize you made a bad purchase. Um, I don't know. That's kind of how I feel about it. I don't. What are, what's your take on that? I mean, have you experienced new? For instance, let me ask. Let me ask it to you this way. A new person that wants to maybe look at handguns. Um, comes into your shop but he's already hesitant he like he doesn't even know he couldn't even name five different types of handguns 
you know, he couldn't even name five different models that are out there. Uh, and he comes up to the glass case that's just got, you know, 30 or 40 handguns laid out uh, with a guy behind the counter who's mean mugging him. That guy is terrified to be in there. Uh, do you see that kind of stuff often and are able to diffuse those situations and just make them feel more comfortable and help them guide through that, you know, through that journey? I've been very fortunate. I got three guys that work for me and uh, my old lady. And I think just the high hello when they walk in takes a huge chip off their shoulders. Yeah. Um, and then just ask them basic questions like, let me ask you, why are you buying this? And they'll tell you. They'll say, hey, it's my first time buying. I don't know what I'm doing. Right. And I really need some help. And we'll just ask them, are you looking for something for recreational? Are you looking for something for self-defense? Are you looking for something in between? Right. And then they'll give us that. And then we'll ask them, you know, is there a color you're interested in, manufacturer, or dollar amount. And we try not to make the dollar amount that important, but right. it is a question. The Absolutely. customers will basically tell you, and from what they tell us, we give them our personal opinion, and then we'll tell them, especially first-time shooters, hey, you know what, I'm probably going to lose out on this sale, but this is a big investment I can tell for you. Why don't you invest $12 at the shooting range up the road and take a look at these three to five guns and shoot them and see which one fits you best because that's going to be the best gun for you. Yeah, absolutely. And most of our customers really appreciate that. Oh, yeah, I'm sure they appreciate the hell of that. What you're talking about there is actually doing discovery for every person that walks in the door. You're asking them questions and leading them to their own answer. Um, but it's so it's so fundamental that it almost surprises you how many people don't do that. They automatically expect the person to walk through the door to know 100% of everything, and sometimes that happens, but especially today that happens less and less and less um so the discovery part and figuring out what that customer needs and you know what their usage is going to be and what they're looking to do with it is um is huge i would think i mean you know there's other there's other obstacles that you know people have to try and overcome i mean whether it's a price point or uh quality objection um you know, it's all about asking those discovery questions to figure out what their need is. Um, so I think it's awesome that you guys are doing that. Now, in the time that you – how long did you say you've uh, you've owned it? About five years. In the time – in that five-year span, how has the how has the business changed? Has it been a substantial change? I mean, you said that you've gained a lot of new customers, um, and you were able to retain a few of the old ones, but you gained a whole lot of new ones. Um, what are some of the biggest differences? Are you carrying more products or, I mean, has the store itself grown or I think I saw when that you I guys, first... you guys were in, were you guys in one location and then you moved around to a different location at one point? It was in the same plaza, but it was kind of hidden in the back between two buildings. And then there's a self-standing building. It was a, an old water burger. And that's what we ended up turning into a gun shop. Gotcha. And, um, I'm not big on the social media, so it was about two and a half years, three years before a customer actually told me the reason they came in was because of the Google reviews, and we had like 400 at the time, and I had no idea how they even existed. Now, yeah. we actually ask customers if they don't mind giving an honest review if they were happy with the service. Yeah. But when I first started, it was okay. It wasn't great. You know, just like everything, it was starting off slow, and it was still new enough. You had the, the group from the the gentleman I purchased from prior, but then now you're on a self-standing building with signage and stuff that, you know, a lot of people start to find out where you are and who you are. Sure. So it's slowly built. And then of course, right around 20, was it 2019 when everything blew up and got crazy? Right. And then we started seeing a huge flux in, you know, new shooters and stuff like that. And that was interesting because I was more of the family-owned, laid-back, non-revolving door type gun shops all of a sudden having a line out front, which is kind of scary, but, <laughs> you know, you do the best you can. <laughs> yeah, yeah, hit the ground running. Yeah, I mean, when that, um, when all that blew up in 2019, I mean, everybody was just crazy busy, swamped like crazy. The, I know a bunch of, uh, I know some gun shops and, and manufacturers who just completely turned their website off. They were like, we we've got so many people coming through the door, I can't even I can't even handle the web traffic right now. So they just turned the website off. I, if somebody had told me, if somebody had told me in 2019 
that people will literally be turning off their website because they can't handle the demand, I would have been like, no, that's not possible. The the web the web sales is what drives business these days uh, in most other industries. Um, but it was crazy to hear. And this. I'm- it was crazy to hear the the stories that people had as far as like just in the door traffic they were getting. I'm still new to the whole website or the web store. We still like doing more hands on. I have an online store at uh, guns.net, yeah. which I was surprised wasn't taken. Yeah. I'm, but, how did you get that? But, Holy smokes. Yeah. But majority of our customers come through the front door. And another thing that you mentioned, which kind of makes us a little different is, we have the standard, the Glocks and the Smith and Wessons and, and stuff like that. But I, I saw a need for the guys that wanted exotic, fancy, different, rare, hard to get. And the only way you're going to get that customer to buy is they have to be able to touch it. So I, it was a huge expense, but I invested a lot of money in some higher end stuff and the class three items like suppressors and transferable full autos and short barrel rifles and, people actually will come because now they can touch yeah a very expensive gun that they wouldn't normally buy online and i think that's helped us out greatly as well yeah i bet it has yeah and it i mean the firearms industry is one of those that people do like the to it's almost like um it's almost like when you go to a car lot and that that car salesman knows if he can get you in that car for a test drive uh you're a lot more likely to buy than just walking around looking at the exterior uh, it's kind of the same thing as shopping online versus going in and actually laying your hands on that firearm, feeling the weight and feeling the texture. Um, and just, it makes it a little bit more real and makes that buying decision just a little bit easier. Especially with some of those higher end rifles. I mean, uh, rifles and shotguns and pistols, um, you know, some of those can be kind of difficult to sell, I'm sure, until they're actually holding it. And another thing that I actually learned from being in the funeral industry, which a lot of people thought was crazy when I did the T&I in the building, is I put two separate rooms for whether people are new or the guys that want to buy high-end yep. or women yep. or they just want to be secluded from everyone else. Yep. And you would sit them in a private room so then they feel more comfortable to ask that dumb question without two other three guys and women standing behind them yep. listening. And that's helped out quite a bit. Yeah, I mean that's that's a huge. There's a um, um, there's another dealer that we have here um, at Selmark who does a very similar thing. He specializes in high end shotguns, and he has a whole room for just his high end shotguns. And it's kind of to we the same situation, kind of tunnel that funnel that traffic into the right room, and that way you're not putting anybody off when the guy in front of you is buying a four thousand dollar shotgun, and you're there maybe to look at a you know I don't know. Two hundred and fifty dollar high point <laughs> pistol, <laughs> uh, because money's money at the end of the day. They're all looking to make the sales, you know. Exactly. Uh, yeah. Uh, you know, one of the things that we've had some struggles with on Sightmark, um, you know, and which Sightmark is the uh, primary sponsor of the podcast. Uh, this is the Sightmark on the Mark podcast. I tend not to do sales pitches or anything like that. I don't do product pushes for the most part. Occasionally in other podcasts, I've mentioned some Sightmark products just because I use them personally. Um, One of the things that I wanted to talk about today, though, was trying to change public uh, perception in some, some areas. Um, Sightmark, when we started back in 2007, uh, it was a small group of guys that were literally trying to sell whatever they could get their hands on, um, and they were wildly successful doing it. But when you run the business that way, one thing that you kind of miss out on is quality. Uh, and so there, in the very, very early stages, Sightmark did have some quality issues. Um, but I'll tell you, fast forward to today, and Sightmark has gone from a um, really good guy got started on the boresight side of things and then branched into <laughs> optics. Fast forward to today when everything is very high quality. We take a lot of pride in the products that we put out in the market, but also um, the customer service that we provide on the back end. I mean, it's very similar to you guys, and every single person that buys one of our products, we want to make sure 
that they're taken care of. Um, so, you know, a lot of people don't know that I'm getting a lot of, uh, I'm getting a lot of feedback on your end. You all right now? Yep. Sounds good. Yeah. It sounded like, uh, sounded like somebody was juggling around some old glass milk crates. Uh, try 805. (laughs) (laughs) Um, what I was saying is, you know, Sidemark's completely morphed as a company into pushing out quality products and then also backing those products up with lifetime warranties in most cases. Some of the digital stuff, you know, sure, we don't have lifetime on the digital stuff, maybe three years, um, you know, maybe a limited lifetime on, like, the body. Um, but a lot of our optics come with lifetime warranties, and I've got, I've got personal friends that call me up, and they use Vortex all the time. And they'll say, you know, I was thinking about buying a, a Sightmark, you know, whatever. You might say, I was thinking about buying a Sightmark um, M-Spec, but I decided to do the Vortex instead because it's got a lifetime warranty. Well, my answer is, we've had a lifetime warranty on that for years. How do you not know that? Like, <laughs> I don't understand. Why didn't you know that? Uh, and it's just because, you know, Sightmark's working on changing the perception and just letting it be known. Like, hey, we've got the same quality products out there. A lot of times coming from the same factories as some of our competitors. Um, And we're offering the same type of warranties. Give us a shot because a lot of times you probably have have an unfair bias because you've never even tried the product. Um, And that's one thing personally that Sightmark's been been fighting with. And our perception has really, really started to change um, for the better uh, with our digital optics. Uh, You talk about the Wraith. Um, that's come out the full color uh, daytime nighttime rifle scope Uh, it's been a huge success for us and then our red dot line um, all of our digital optics have been really really good Um, but that's one of the things that just like you guys were hyper focused on customer service we're doing the same thing on our end and just trying to put a whole lot of time and attention on the customer service side of things and just let the public know like hey if you've got a problem with anything let us know. Like we're gonna completely back our product. Send it in. We'll check it out. If we can't fix it, we'll replace it. I'm gonna give you an opinion, and then I'm gonna tell you something else. My opinion on Vortex and you guys was Vortex does a little better job marketing mm-hmm. than you guys do, and people just know the name. Yep. And prior to me getting into the industry, um. I didn't know any better. You know, you heard Vortex, you threw it on, it was a decent product, and you moved on. And then, I don't know if I'm allowed to throw his name out there, but my rep, Ryan, his customer service is freaking awesome. And I never saw a Vortex rep since I've owned my shop in five years. Really? Ryan's kind of weird. Ryan's kind of weird here at the office. I didn't know he would be that good at customer (laughs) service. He's definitely one of my favorite reps. (laughs) But um, I will tell you this. I have a lot of friends in law enforcement. They get a good deal on Vortex. They're familiar with the name. Yep. And I warranty a shit ton of Vortex yep. to the point where I don't even – I don't carry them. I haven't carried them in the last four years because of the the issues that I had. And my thing is if you have a lifetime warranty, what is a lifetime warranty when you have to warranty it? and recite it in, spend the money on ammo, waiting for the new product to come in. And I've yeah. sold a lot of your guys' product, and I think I had one bore sight go bad, and it looked like because it was just hammered in the chamber by the customer, yeah. but you guys warranted it anyways. Yeah. And then I had a, uh, a little red dot that looked like it got drove over, and you guys warranted that even though you knew what happened. Yeah. You took care of the customer, and you took care of me. But other than that, I don't think I've ever had a warranty issue, and I think it's just the marketing. I think Vortex has you on the marketing, but I'm not that impressed with their stuff. But I've well, got your low I'll, end stuff, and I got your high end stuff, and I love them both. I'll tell you, I'll tell you what it is, honestly, and I don't know if I'm going to get in trouble for diving this far into it, but um, you know, companies. I'll just say companies. I won't single anybody out. There are optics companies out there who are manufacturing products very, very similar to Sightmark, and what they're doing is just kicking the price tag up on them so much that they can afford to literally send out free products all over the place. Um, That's a marketing technique that a lot of these optic companies are using. Um, It's successful for them in just giving away products because you're selling those products at about three times the cost. 
Um, that's not the way SiteMark has wanted to do things. And yeah, it's been a little bit slower building for us, but now our customer service side of things and our quality is just, I think it's better for us in the long run to have went with the slower route. Our primary objective was we wanted to offer quality optics at a, at a lower price point. Um, something that, you know, anybody, whether they were brand new coming into the industry or somebody that's very tenured and has a whole lot of experience, we're going to have something um, within your price range. Um, and it's been wildly successful for us, but that's kind of what makes us the difference. In the grand scheme of things, an awful lot of these products are very similar. Um, it does boil down to marketing style, um, but also it kind of boils down to, you know, how you present that product to the public and, and you know, what you value, value that product at. Um, so without well, naming any I, names, uh, that's what's going on with some of our competitors. I've thrown your product on a couple of my guns on the star from entry level to the high end stuff. And personally, I don't know much about optics. I know when I look at them, if it's fuzzy inside or the glass isn't great, but I can't tell you the difference between Zeiss and Vortex or Sightmark or whoever. Right. But I do know on the higher end stuff, you get a guy who knows his stuff. Yep. And he'll look through it and he'll be like, what is this? Yep. And why is it so cheap? And I'm like, you know what? Just try it. If you don't like it, I'll take it back personally. Yeah. And I don't know if you'll cover me or not, but I'll end up throwing it up on one of my guns or giving it to a family member because <laughs> I love the stuff. But I've never had one guy that was a you know, four or five, six thousand dollar optic guy come in and spend twelve, fourteen hundred dollars on a, you know, like a pinnacle one to four or something like that, and then right. come back praising how great it is and couldn't figure out why he was dumping three times that and something else. Well, I've had a, I've had a personal friend that had a similar experience. He bought one of our uh, scopes and he said he's not going to go back to the competitor that he was using, um, but it was basically because of customer service. I mean, he had an issue with his other scope and they wouldn't answer the phone, they wouldn't return emails. They made it very difficult to communicate, and you know he had a lifetime warranty on that product, but he couldn't warranty it because the company was unresponsive. That happens all the time. Um, but one of the cool well, things, I'm, yeah, go ahead. I'm going to bad mouth a company which I don't like doing, but this was just a, a sore in my rear end, <laughs> and that is um, EOTech. Mm. I'm the owner of a gun shop. I had one expire its warranty by two months personally called them to ask them to get it to warranty and he told me it's two months expired and i flat out asked him so you're telling me to pound sand <laughs> and he said basically yes wow i took every eotech i had in my case and i sold them at dead nuts cost to whoever <laughs> wanted them and i've never ordered one since oh man and once again like you said customer service today even though everyone likes to say customer service is dead and it's close but there's a lot of people out there to appreciate it, and that's one thing that you guys do have. Your product is good. Your customer service is superior. Well, I like to powder my own butt, but let's give credit where credit's due. I mean, what are some other companies out there that, that tend to offer pretty good customer service from your end? And I'm uh, rifleman or, you know, gun my, manufacturers, optics companies, I don't care. My two favorite optics are SIG and you guys. Very nice. Okay. So, and I've got, you know, I've got the sight marks. Um, I got a Pulsar. I don't know. Ryan got me one of those, yeah. and I've sold a couple of those. People really like those. as a nice thermal, um, above my pay grade, but phenomenal yeah. for a simple guy like me. Yeah. But those are my two favorites. And if someone wants something else, I'll order them. Whatever, you know, I'll make sure the customer's happy. But sure. what I carry are you two, and that's because I know at the end of the day the customer's going to be happy. If there's an issue. They're going to be taken care of, and I get to play the hero, and <laughs> it's a win-win situation, and that's the way it should be. Well, and, and companies like Sightmark, we're not successful unless we have good dealers like you pushing out products. So um, we really appreciate I mean, as much as we've powdered our own butt here, I, I, we really appreciate the, the uh, partnership with you guys, and um, we're looking forward to you know just maintaining that and continuing to, to kick butt together, you know? Um, one of the things that's that's going to be kind of fun that we're doing here, um, we have in the past sent out some of our products, like for instance a Latitude rifle scope, which was one of our higher end rifle scopes. We sent out to a uh, magazine, I think it might have been American Guns and Ammo, 
um, to do a torture test, and they tied it up to a truck and drug it for like five miles. Now, first off, let me let me say I think that the torture tests are stupid because I'm much more interested in realistic um, scenarios. Like, you know, I'm not ever going to be dragging one of my guns five miles and then hoping it still operates effectively and my scope works. So they're kind of silly to me. They're kind of gimmicky. But they did it, and they had good results. We like that. We like the attention from that. However, um, we've decided that we're going to start trying to do a little bit of that in-house. So we're actually going to be torture testing a few things here um, personally, um, which will be just kind of fun. I just like to tear shit up sometimes. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, when people talk about not necessarily torture testing, but I know a lot of people with, expensive and inexpensive optics water is a big issue and yeah. of course i haven't heard anything on your end you know because i've never had a warranty issue but a lot of guys go out hunting it starts raining some people leave their shit you know outside i don't know how that happens or just in the bed of the truck while it's raining and not have a canopy kids and it'll get water in there or fogged up or whatever and i don't think enough people torture test with the moisture sector Oh, that's true. That's true. Yeah, and actually, I'm. Well, I'll make a note of that right now, and we'll try and see if we can add that into our own torture testing. I mean, taking a rubber mallet to one and dragging it, or yeah, dropping. I mean, everybody. You know, we've all seen the videos of people dropping optics, and some people actually take a rubber mallet to them. We're not going to go out of our way smacking on optics, but people will accidentally bump them and drop them. Yeah, I mean, and a lot of people will leave them out in the rain. A drop test is something we do here. We've always done drop test. Uh, I think we drop from, I think we drop from three or four foot. Um, I don't want to say for sure the distance, but it's it's several feet that we drop from. Um, but it's because we want to make sure that it's you know, at least shockproof enough to sustain to you know still be usable after a short fall because. Stuff like that happens. I mean, my buddy knocked his rifle off of the, well, for whatever reason, he had put it on his case, set up on the side of his um, pickup, and it had just a, a very slight bump into the truck, and the whole thing fell over, fell right onto the optic. Um, luckily, it was fine. Um, but, yeah, that kind of stuff happens, and that's realistic that's realistic stuff. So I like that a little bit more than just, you know, dragging behind a truck, but it is what it is. And if somebody wants to test our products and do a review on it, we're all for it. Um, but yeah, I got a stupid, yeah, go ahead. I got a stupid question. So Pulsar, Sightmark and Cellmark. Yep. All right. Because I will say Cellmark and wonder if I'm saying it wrong, or I'll <laughs> say Sightmark. But aren't you guys all the same? Yeah. So we're we're not all the same. Um, Cellmark is the parent the parent company? Cellmark owns several brands. They own Sightmark, Firefield, Kofiager, which is the uh, tripod kits, um, Bullet Safe, which is bulletproof vests which is a new acquisition of us. If you haven't heard about those yet, they're wildly popular. You should get with Ryan. Um, and then we are the only U.S. distributor for Pulsar Thermal. Um, so we have five brands under our umbrella. Um, and, yeah, a lot of the same team is, is pushing out a lot of those products. Um, but each one of those brands has specific customer service because each one of those is a different um, you know, different set of products with different needs and, and specialties and stuff like that. So, um, we've really taken it and tried to hyper-focus on each individual brand as much as possible while keeping them all under the same umbrella. Yep. And that's why you, that's why you probably hear some of those all at the same time when talking with Ryan and stuff like that. Now you mentioned Firefield. Yep. I've got a couple of those, uh, rapid, one to fours and one to sixes. Isn't it funny? I mean, I don't know how they sell in Arizona, but over here those sell so well. Those sell so well. Those are so awesome. We uh, we probably have two or three guns on the floor that have them. Yeah. And I'll let people take them outside and just take a look, and they come back and they like just leave it the way it is. Well, yeah. I mean, because so. you look at a you look at a rifle scope that it comes with the it comes with a tactical mount. It comes with, we have a different, we have, I think, two different kits in that same scope. And so, you know, whether you get the red dot side or you get the, 
you know, the honeycomb filters or, or whatever they're coming with as far as accessories go. You get it all for like under two hundred dollars and it's like yeah, it's a no brainer. Like <laughs> Yep. Uh, they're so, awesome yeah so anyway well i appreciate you uh you know talking a little bit of good stuff about us um i appreciate you taking the time to come on and record a podcast looks like we're running up on 45 minutes here so i'm going to cut you short um Perfect. but what i want to do before we get off the phone is just give you one more uh opportunity to to get a message out there um what i like to say is you got a million and some odd people listening to this podcast right now. I'm just kidding. Uh, not quite that many. But let's say you had a million. What would you tell those people? You know, do your research and try not to make money your main concern. Your life's worth more than a few extra bucks. Yeah. Find a place that's going to be there tomorrow. Yeah. Pay a little extra if it costs a little extra as long as the customer service justifies it. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. How can um, – how can people find American Guns and Ammo? At, like, what are your avenues? You got Facebook, Instagram. You said you got the website going, which is guns.net. Is I, that right? Yeah, I don't do uh, the Facebook. I have a Facebook and an Instagram. I just don't know how it works, so I apologize. But gotguns.net takes you to my website, and um, that seems to be the easiest way, and people can – usually find it instead of typing out American guns and ammo.com. Right. But gotguns.net will take you right to the main page and then you can send me questions. I answer everything. My personal cell phone is all over online or social media. Oh, I don't write from anybody. People can call me direct and uh, we just try to take care of our customers best we can. So how's that work? You just turn that phone off at five or... Nope, I've answered it at 2 o'clock in the morning. Someone Holy had an issue smokes. with a suppressor once and was freaking out, and yeah. I answered. I can't guarantee that I'll answer, but my <laughs> phone is always on. Awesome. Well, that's uh, that's very brave of you. And don't don't worry too much about the Facebook and Instagram. They'd have blocked you anyway. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, hey, thanks for the time. I'm going to cut out here and, and let you get back to your uh, back to your day off. Enjoy it, Matt. All right. I appreciate it. You have a great week. All right, bye.